G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Today on the bench I have the Runcam Swift. I've got a complaint. I've got a bit of a complaint to, to fire at Runcam. Now, you guys are going to have to stop making so many really cool new products because no one can afford to buy them all. And this is another really cool new product from Runcam. It is the Swift 2. Now, the Swift is a derivation of the HS1177. That's a good camera. So the, the 1177 is a great camera, the Swift's a great camera, and this Swift 2 has improved on an already really good product by adding some quite useful extra functionality. Well, first of all, I'm not going to unbox it. I'm going to show you. I've installed one already in this, my Bolt 210. Now, as you can see, it's easy fit. It fits in the same space as the HS1177. No real problems there. Um, and I haven't been able to fly this yet because it's raining. Raining and blowing a gale. Oh, tell me about it. So um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do now is just run through the differences or the enhancements, you might say, that this new Swift 2 has over the original Swift or an HS1177. And first up, the lens is different. Now this has got a 2.3 millimeter lens. That's actually quite a short lens. And just for those who don't know, the shorter the lens, that's the smaller the number, then the wider the angle, wider, wider the field of view. Now, traditionally we've flown mini quads with 2.8 millimeter lenses, and some people have started shifting to 2.5 millimeter. So 2.3 is even wider angle. Now, I haven't flown this. I don't know what effect that's going to have on my flying. It could be good. It could be bad. We don't know. But generally speaking, with mini quads today, because they often fly at such a very high angle of attack, you want a very wide angle lens. Because if you use a narrow lens, like a 2.8, then you have to have so much angle on your camera, the camera has to be faced up so much so that you can actually see the horizon while you're flying forward at speed, that when you come to land, the horizon disappears, it becomes a real pain in the backside to try and land these things, because you can't see the ground until you've hit it. So going to wider angle lenses makes that problem much less of a problem. You can run less camera tilt, and you can still see the horizon, and you can still see the ground when you're landing. So. When I do the flight test on this, I'll show you the comparison perhaps between a wide angle lens, let's say a 2.3 and a 2.5 and a 2.8. So you can see the difference because it's going to make a, you know, um, quite a difference to the way you fly these things. The only problem with a wide angle lens, of course, is everything seems a bit faster. The gates seem to be a long, long way away. Then all of a sudden you're upon them because it's wide angle. Everything looks further away. Right. So one thing you'll notice on my bolt is this wire hanging out? What's, what's there? What's the go on with that, eh? Well, one of the really cool features of the Swift 2 is that they provide a little extension lead to plug in so that you can use the OSD adjustment dongle, which is this little joystick here. So if I want to adjust my camera settings, I don't have to fart around trying to get this lead here stuffed in the back of the camera, which is buried deep in the bowels of my quad or my aircraft. I can just plug into the extension and then I can start changing the settings, which is great because there are no perfect settings. Sometimes it's nice to tweak the contrast or the brilliance a little bit on a dull overcast day and then wind them back a bit on a really sunny day if you want the real best FPV experience. Now, mostly I don't bother because in most of my quads it's just such a faff to do it. But on this one, hey, I can take this with me. It's not very heavy, fits in the backpack. And when I want to do a bit of tweaking to make a better picture, I can do it without all the stuffing around. Only thing, of course, I'll have to make sure I tuck this away so it doesn't get caught up in the props, which inevitably it will do if I'm not careful. Now, the uh, Runcam Swift 2 is also quite good because they've boosted the top end voltage. Normally, I think the HS1177 was originally, um, what was it? I think it was 5 volts to 15 volts. Then they bumped it up to 17 volts so you could run it with a four cell pack. Then it went to 22. And the Swift 2 will run on 36 volts. Look at that, right up to 36 volts. So that's brilliant. You can run a lot of cells without, without having to worry about regulating down the voltage. So, hey, that's cool. But on the Bolt 210, it's running on five volts because it's run through a regulator and the thing. So um, it will run right down to five volts quite reliably. Now, the next thing is the real extra feature on this thing, and that is that it has a built-in OSD. It really does. The OSD, you know I'm not a fan of OSDs, I'm someone who likes to fly bareback, but but on this particular machine I haven't set up telemetry, it's got the XSR receiver and it's actually a bit more of a faff to set that up to do telemetry to my Tyrannus and I've been meaning to get around to do it, but hey I won't have to now because my battery voltage will be displayed on my screen. Show you what I mean. Right here's an LCD display I've got going and I'm going to plug in my quad to bring up the live picture from the... FPV camera, there it is. 
So now I'm going to point it at something so that the display is a little more visible. Actually, what have I got here I can put in the way? I might put something over the camera so that we can see the background better. There we go. Um, hopefully we can see that. So this, and unfortunately, there we go. So we've got the voltage displayed down here. There is the voltage. I wonder if I can angle this a little bit better so you can see on the camera. There we go. Maybe that's better. Oh, no. yeah, perfect. Look at that. So, yeah, Ooh, still moving. Um, down here, we've got the voltage of the battery pack on the quad. We've got a title you can set there. This, I'll put Bolt 210 so I know what I'm flying, although it's pretty hard to miss because I've got these big pillars here which really stand out with the bolt. And over here there's a timer. Now this timer unfortunately it doesn't, there's no way of arming that timer. It's just going to run from the moment you power up your quad. So it's not as useful as it could be. Let me just go down a bit here and pull in so we can get a better look at that LCD. Um, yeah, so this, this, it's of limited value, that timer. And, and, but you can turn any of these elements off. If you don't want the timer, you can turn it off. Woohoo! And if you don't want the voltage, you can turn it off. But why would you not want the voltage? Um, the accuracy of the voltage is not too bad. It's about 0.1 of a volt out, I think. Right now, I'm going to get my multimeter, my fluke meter, set it to volts, <clears throat> and I'm going to measure the voltage of the pack that is connected. Now it says 12.1 on the LCD. Let's see what it is in real life because I imagine that my fluke meter will be a little bit more accurate than the OSD. Here we go, connecting up and it says it's actually 12.28, so nearly 12.3, so it's 0.2 or 0.18 volts out. It's reading 0.18 volts low. Yeah, that's well acceptable. I'm not too worried about that. That's fine, excellent. So, hmm. Now, all these things can be moved around there's a, there's, with that little OSD thing. I'm not going to go through the rigmarole of showing you every little bit ins and outs. There's other videos on YouTube where people have done that. They've shown you all the menu options. Suffice to say that there's not a lot you can't do. These things can be repositioned up and down, up and down. You can change bits and pieces. Bloody marvellous. Now, how do I get this voltage? Well, there's two ways. Either the voltage that feeds the camera can be displayed there. So normally you've got your positive, minus and your video. And if you just use that, then it will show you the voltage that's going in through the camera's power feed. But it will read even lower because there'll be a little diode there just in the way. So you have to make compensation for that. However, there is an extra wire. Oops, yeah, we're beaconing. Hold on, better unplug this. <clears throat> okay, now as you can see, we have the five volts, we have ground, we have video, audio. Now this has a microphone in it. Another feature, this has a little microphone. I think that's the microphone uh, opening there. Um, so if you want to get audio from your plane or your quad, you can just run a wire from the audio connection on here through to your video transmitter with the audio input on that. And then of course there is another wire here called VBAT, which is the voltage that the camera will display uh, if you connect something up to it. So it'll either use the voltage you put in on the power or it'll use the voltage which is on VBAT. And I recommend you use the VBAT voltage. One of the things is that on the Bolt 210, the camera and the video trans or the camera itself is powered at five volts so it wouldn't tell me my flight pack so I had to put the wire from the VBAT to the PDB to show me in a true voltage of the battery which is great I mean it's one wire one extra wire and the nice people at Runcam have made up some little looms for you in the box you actually get this little bag of goodies and in the bag of goodies if I can get it open I hate these Ziploc bags boys have trouble with them oh easy today must be the cold um, Let's have a look what you get in this little bag. There's all sorts of cool stuff. There's your dongle, your little joystick for adjusting your OSD. There's another bag which contains screws, bolts, and an Allen key wrench, which is great because I can never find the wrench I need when I'm trying to do this. And then you have the little extension lead that I showed you earlier, which plugs into the back of the camera because there is a separate connector for the OS, for, uh, sorry, for the adjustment of the um, camera. And I'll plug that into there. Hopefully I can get that in. Do it off shot because I'm blind as a bat. There we go, so that can plug into the back of the camera and then you can plug your dongle into that. So you can leave that always connected when it's in the model. Brilliant. Um, then there are a couple of leads. There's one, if you just want to, want to replace an HS1177, then there's your, just your video, your power and your earth. That's all you need, it's plus minus and the video. That's a simple lead. That will plug into the back of the camera. Let me unplug this and let me plug this in. It's all pretty simple if you know what you're doing, which means it's very hard for me. Um, that'll plug into the back of the camera like that. It leaves some of the pins on that main connector unconnected because you don't need them because you're only doing video power or video and power. However, if you want to use the microphone or the battery sensing circuitry, then you have this other lead. These are all silicon wire, nice and flexible. They are not going to 
um, cause problems like some of the PVC coated wires do with vibration and flexing. And out of here we have the VBAT wire, look it's all, see that? There's your VBAT wire, so that's the one that will go onto your PDB, on the positive of your PDB, and then you just have to cut this and join it up to the connections to your video camera uh, in the normal way. Uh, and if you don't need the audio, just leave it out. Simple as. So yeah, it's, it's a piece of cake. And they also provide you a different style case. Now this comes with the one which has got the extra screws there so you can tilt and lock it if your frame supports it. This one is more like the old HS1177. Okay, so that's the bench report on this camera. I'm really impressed with it so far. I love the OSD, I love the configurability, and it's not much more expensive than the regular Runcam Swift, so I'd say, given the choice between the two, I'd certainly go for the Swift 2 because you're paying just a little bit of extra money for that OSD capability and let's face it, um, everyone wants to know what their flight pack voltage is, especially if you have a radio that doesn't have telemetry with a voice uh, response or voice prompts because if you're flying FPV you've got to have something on the screen. Now of course you can use something like a minimum OSD and things but this is just so much simpler, much less wiring, no extra weight, brilliant, excellent top quality. So what I'll do is, the weather is crap, if there is a small gap in the rain I will go and do some flying in the cloudy conditions and then when the sun comes out I'll do some flying in sunny conditions. So we can get a side by side comparison between the, the worst of conditions and the best of conditions but honestly this really appears to be um, a Sony Superhead 2 with wide dynamic range in the guts of it. So it's probably going to perform exactly the same as the HS1177 and the original Runcam Swift which means pretty damn good camera. So there you go. If you've got questions, comments, put them in the usual place. I will do my best to answer them. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I will now get back to the bench. Bye for now.